in Washington to speak to Michael Rounds of South Dakota. He's the oldest of 11 kids, which means he survived dinner many nights in his childhood. Mike Rounds with us, and what is so unique and charming about him, he actually has executive experience. How odd is that in the modern politics of Democrats? And I might point out Republicans as well. How do you look at the cacophony of Washington, the Democrats, including your president, who had zero executive experience uh, before they took over these duties? Well, Mitch McConnell would suggest to you that if you ask any United States senator whether he'd rather be a governor or a United States senator, if he tells you he'd rather be a senator, he'd lie to you about other things as well. Mm -hmm. Working as a governor, in my opinion, is probably the greatest job in the world because, in part, you can actually get things done. In the United States Senate, it's a little more frustrating. Mm -hmm. I come from South Dakota, which has got a lot of common sense. We balance our budget every single year. We've got low unemployment. We recognize that the legislative session is... 40 days and 40 nights long, and that's it. And then everybody goes home and they live with the rules they've made for another year. That kind of common sense does not exist in Washington. Can, can we perish right, talk about London? In London, what sort of have the Brexit days, mess? There you Brexit go. Is over. You have 30 great. days to sort out Brexit and then an extra t 10 days to sort out the U.S. administration. How will immigration actually divide the, the tr Trump and White House administration? Immigration is critical. We have to reform immigration, no question about it at all. Uh, look, we've got Supreme Court decisions. We've got we've got previous court decisions, including the Flores decision, in, in which it it does not fit with our existing legislative uh, uh, laws today. Because of that, what you have in the United States is a broken system that does not allow the the individuals to come into our our country in the numbers that we need to actually grow our economy. While at the same time, you have individuals who feel that they have better economic opportunities here than in their home countries of the Central American countries. And so you have them moving in, trying to cross the border, and inundating the southern border. We have to have border security, but we also have have to have a reasonable immigration policy that does not exist today. Right, but how much pushback or blowback is the president getting in Washington for what he's done to the Department of Homeland Security? I think it's a recognition of his frustration. He wants border security. He has expressed in the past his desire to upgrade and fix the immigration system, but he can't do it alone. He's got to have legislative assistance. He has to have a Congress that's prepared to make those modifications. He's not finding that right now in a divided Congress. And what we have today is a case of where if you really want to get things done, you're going to have to be able to work across the aisle. Remember, you've got new Democrats who are coming in who are saying, we just took back the House of Representatives. We're going to show people that we're in charge. And that's not the way that it works in Washington. We have a Republican president, a Republican-controlled uh, Senate, but probably one of the more reasonable Senates in terms of people trying to work across the aisle. But I think we're going to have to have a time period in which House members are going to learn that it does take compromise mm -hmm. to get anything done. From the foreign country of South Dakota, yeah. and I look at Chamberlain, South Dakota, and the pheasant hunting out there, which is completely foreign to the urban elite of the east and uh, the left coast uh, as well. The divides of America, you know what, it's always been this way. And there's this feeling right now we can't get back to one nation. How would you suggest we do it, Governor? Take a look at our founding fathers. See what they did. In 1776, they declared their independence. They put, them all, they put all of themselves together. Mm -hmm. They fought a a revolutionary war in which if they would have lost, they probably would have hung separately. Instead, they hung together. Mm. They stuck together. They worked their way through. When they were all said and done, these men of principle then right. had to figure out how to create a country and to have a governing system. Yeah. It took them a decade or more to get that done. They did not agree with one another. Big states, little states, rural states, those with large uh, cities in them. What did they come up with? They came up with a form of governance that included compromises. Right. The Senate and the House. Big states did not like the, the, yeah, the idea of a Senate where every state had two senators. Little states didn't like the idea of the House of Representatives mm -hmm. where the big states had lots of power. Okay, yeah. is, but they did it because it was better than simply continuing to fight. They indulged huh. one another. Stephanie Flanders, jump country. in here. So I, I want to ask you where the South Dakota of the United Kingdom is, but jump in here with Senator Rounds. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting. When you, when you, and you see, there's, you know, obviously, there's now so much uh, theatre in, yeah. in Congress, and that's what I think mo certainly many investors looking at, at Congress, they're expecting only theatre for the next, certainly, maybe through to the presidential election, certainly um, for this, for the next year. When you talk about an unusually reasonable uh, Senate, you know, a lot of people would not, 
see that so much. Where are we going to see some wonderful, reasonable, bipartisan uh, consensus in the Senate? Let me give you some, some thoughts. N number one, we'll do an appropriations process this year, but it's not one that's going to require a budget. We'll agree on a top line, what we're going to spend for the next two years. And then we'll divide it out, and we will make an agreement on where we spend the money for defense and non-defense discretionary. The other mandatory programs for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, paying the interest on the debt, they're all on autopilot. They mm -hmm. will continue on. That's one of the reasons why we have a trillion dollar a year deficit that's increasing because about 70% of the entire budget is on autopilot. How do you explain to your president that that's not acceptable? My chart of the year last year was the twin deficits. He's focused on a trade deficit, which every economist tells us is a bogus analysis. How do you get your Republican Party back to any kind of uh, fiscal responsibility? He doesn't want to do it. Well, it, it, it's not a matter of getting our Republican Party back to fiscal responsibility. It's a matter of actually voting on the entire budget, number one. But what the president wants to do is to grow the economy. He had the right choices when he said he wanted to Do you see any evidence that Kudlow and Stephen Moore have a supply side theory that supports a growing economy? I do. And in fact, St Stephen Moore and I would probably agree that supply side is, is the right way to go. Look, if, if you have anything close to what I would call the Laffer curve, one in which you try to uh, create the most amount of money coming into government based upon the lowest rates possible mm -hmm. and return that back into the economy rather than putting it up here as simply a high tax rate, we're showing right now that we're actually creating more dollars coming in in revenue than we had before we did the tax rate I'll give you cuts. the revenue side, but on the Laffer okay. curve, there's an expense side as well. Th th there is, but you can't control the expense side by simply changing tax policy. You've actually got to control the expenses. And what we've got right now is a Congress which since 1974 has not voted on the entire budget. Where's the Republican leadership to bring back that I, normative process? I, I think it will happen, but when we've talked about it, what we find out is that most administrations want to do it in their second term, not in their first term. Remember, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security are critical safety mm -hmm. nets. But today, they're on autopilot. No. And if they're on autopilot, it means you're not managing them. And if you're not managing them and voting on them, they right. become inefficient. But the, but the, and the, that's what's happening the, here. But the biggest increase in the deficit that we see in the next few years is coming from that hole in tax revenues that was opened by the bill <coughs> last year. So in terms of the change relative to last year, it was from the, it's from the tax cuts. So you're just saying those numbers are wrong? We're going to see the revenues come through? I, I would respectfully disagree with that approach because in looking at where the actual increases in our costs are going in, it's in the mandatory programs. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security are all going up faster than our revenues are, grow are growing. But you would not even have an opportunity to fix our deficits if you did not have well, a sane tax policy. We're as close to a sane tax policy as we've been in years. If you're this fired United up States. at this early in the morning, I can't imagine what Senator Rounds is we'll at 2 p.m. this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> the senator from South Dakota, Mike Rounds, uh, with us uh, today. We'll continue here. Much more to talk about. We're going to look uh, to the fiscal policy of the International Monetary Fund today. This is most timely. You two.